pray the Lord, my soul, to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord, my soul, to take. God bless the trustees, and please make us good children. Forever and ever, amen. Good night. Good night. God bless my sister Mary. Amen. Please take very good care of my duck and my pony. Please see that they don't catch pneumonia. Give a hot lemonade. <laughs> Will you be quiet? Spunky, you like the superintendent? What? What? You like Mrs. Denham? You like the trustees? You like me, Spunky? Spunk? Good morning, Henrietta. Good morning. Henrietta, nothing must be allowed to go wrong today. Absolutely nothing. Yes, Mrs. Williams. Of course, I shall hope to please all the trustees. But I'm particularly anxious that we make a good impression on Mr. Edward Morgan. I think I am, sir. You think? Why, Henrietta, it isn't good enough. Read that, Henrietta. Read it carefully. You see? 
Mr. Morgan is our richest trustee. He is coming here today for the first time. If he is really pleased with the orphanage, I believe he will double his donation to us for the coming year. Oh, how wonderful. Exactly. Seven o'clock, Henrietta. Time to call the children. Very well. Oh, Henrietta, yes. I forgot. Mr. James Wyckoff will also be among the trustees who will visit us today. I want you to make very sure that a large bottle of Mr. Wyckoff's famous cough mixture is prominently displayed in our medicine cabinet. I'll see to it. Come into my office. At once. Yes, ma'am. Elizabeth, this is the second time in a month that you have been called to the superintendent's office. Yes, ma'am. The last time you were here, your sister Mary was also brought before me. You both admitted at that time that you had been singing and dancing without permission. Yes, ma'am. Do you know why you are here this time? Yes, ma'am. Then tell me why. Don't you know? <coughs> Quiet. Now, Elizabeth, tell me why you are here. Because I took a pony to bed with me. Child, you're absolutely uncontrollable. Yes, ma'am. Elizabeth? I am well aware that your late father and mother were in the theatrical profession, and that you therefore came to this home with no proper sense of discipline. Under the circumstances, I have made every allowance for you. But when you bring animals into the dormitory, I must act. That's what my daddy and mum used to do. What? Act. Don't be impudent. Now, your pony and your duck will be sold immediately. Please, Mrs. Higgins, please. I'll be good, but don't take Spunky away from me. And my poor little duck. And why not? Because my pony and my duck are not just ordinary animals. My daddy and my mommy teach them to do tricks on the stage. And just what is your duck trained to do? Oh, my duck does a wonderful trick. My duck can lay an egg. And just what is so wonderful about that? Well, can you lay an egg? <coughs> oh, excuse me. Elizabeth? I have decided to get rid of your pony and your duck. They will be sent away this morning. Yes, ma'am. No sniffling now. Yes, ma'am. What? No, ma'am. There, baby, don't cry. Mary. Don't let them. Please don't let them send Spunky and my duck away. <laughs> oh, darling. Now listen to me, dear. Listen very carefully to what I'm going to tell you. All right, Mary. Spunky would be very unhappy if he saw you crying, wouldn't he? I suppose so. You don't want to make him unhappy, do you? Oh, no. All right, then. When it comes time to say goodbye to Spunky, you'll have to be just as brave as brave can be. So you can make him brave, too. See? Spunky and I are such awfully good friends. I know, dear. All right, Mary. I'll try to be brave about Spunky and my duck. Good for you. Look, how'd you like to help me get lunch? Oh, I'd love that. I like to make things to eat, and I especially like to eat them. <laughs> Mama 
of crackers in my soup. Monkeys and rabbits loop the loop. Gosh, oh gee, but I have fun swallowing animals one by one. In every bowl of soup I see lions and tigers watching me. I make them jump right through a hoop. Those animal crackers in my soup. When I get hold of the big bad wolf, I just push him under the ground. Then I bite him in a million bits and I go pull him right down. When they're inside me where it's dark, I walk around like no with art. I stuff my tummy like a goop with animal crackers in my soup. Animal crackers in my soup do funny things to me. They make me think my neighborhood is a big menagerie. For instance, there's our janitor. His name is Mr. Klein. And when he hollers at us kids, he reminds me of the lion. <laughs> Grocer is so big and fat, he has a big mustache. He looks just like a walrus just before he takes a splash. Animal crackers in my soup, and them rabbits loose the loop. Gosh, oh gee, but I have a swallowing animal one by one. In every bowl of soup I see, lions and tigers watching me. I make them jump right through a hoop, those animal crackers in my soup. Hold on the big bad wolf, I just push him under two ground. Then I bite him in a million bits, and I go pull him right down. When they're inside me, where it's dark, I walk around like no is arc. I stuff my tummy like a goop with animal crackers in my soup. <laughs> kind of manners you teach them? Well, of course not, Mr. Wyckoff. They've been told they must always be quiet at mealtime. Oh, they've been told, have they? Well, just telling them doesn't seem to be good enough. Perhaps a bit of real discipline wouldn't do them any harm. Have you been told not to sing in the dining room? Yes, sir. Then why do you do it? You're a bad and wicked child. You know that, don't you? She isn't a bad or wicked child. She's just a baby. She was making the children laugh. Besides, it wasn't her fault. I told her to sing for the children. And who are you, young woman? Are you an orphan, too? Yes, sir. Then what right have you to be here, living on charity at your age? I'll tell you what I'm doing here. I scrub the floors and make the beds and wash and iron and cook from six in the morning until nine at night. Quiet! I won't be quiet. You're a mean and hateful man to frighten little children. Betty, report to my office after the meeting. Yes, ma'am. The rest of you will go to the main yard and wait there till it's time for inspection by our dear trustees. Yes, Mr. Aren't you going to join us, Mr. Morgan? What? Oh, oh yes, oh, yes, of course, the... The meeting of the trustees. Of course. Would you mind beginning without me? I'd like to look about the place a few minutes by myself. But we have so many important matters. Uh, I'll join you in a few minutes if you don't mind. Well, of course. Thank you. She isn't wicked. Oh, I'm sorry. Please don't get up. 
I just wanted to tell you how much I admired your spunk in standing up for that adorable youngster as you did. She didn't mean any harm. Of course she didn't mean any harm. And I don't think singing that song was such a terrible crime either. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed your playing, too. Thank you very much. Tell me, where in the world did that youngster pick up such a charming song? Well, I write them. And... You, you write music? If you could call it music. Oh, I call it delightful music. Look here. Would you promise not to give me away if I made a terrible confession? Well, yes, of course. <laughs> Well, the deep, dark secret in my life is that now and then I compose a bit of music myself. But isn't it fun? Getting the melody and then finding just the right words for it. Great. You know, the happiest days of my life were those I spent studying music under Professor Auspitzer in Brune, Austria. Oh, those must have been happy days. Ah, but that isn't all of it. I love the people in the little Austrian towns. They're so proud because their music is the music of the world. It seems that most everyone in those quaint little villages has a sort of uh, hello neighbor smile. They love the simple things in life. The simple things in life. That almost sounds like the words of a song. I remember the suggestion. Perhaps someday they might make a song. Will you do me a great favor? Certainly. I have to run along now to the trustees meeting, but soon as business is over, I'll be back and... Will you play me some more of your music? If you'd really like to hear it, and Mrs. Higgins... I asked to. All right. Until later, then, hmm? Mm. And what's this uh, item? Sandboxes and swings. It's such a problem to keep the little ones occupied. When I was young, we didn't have a play problem because we didn't have time to play. No. Floor runner for the dormitory. What's the matter with the peasant linoleum? Well, it's been so cold this winter. Sometimes the children have coughed so badly that I've been terribly worried about them. No need for that. Madam, you have no doubt heard of the famous Wyckoff's cough mixture. Oh. I have manufactured and sold that cough mixture for many years. Anyone taking it regularly will never cough. I would suggest that you lay in a fresh supply. Very well. When I was young, I lived in Maine, where the weather was 20 below zero. In those days, we didn't even have linoleum. And look at me now. When I was young, I lived in Maine, where the weather is about a thousand below zero. No, no, Mrs. Denham. No carpets, no linoleum, no nothing. And look at me now. <laughs> Madam, is this the kind of respect you teach them? Oh, my goodness. How dare you take my hat and coat? I beg your pardon, Mr. Wyckoff, but those things are mine. Yours? Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. I see. Uh, this eyesight of mine, uh, bad, you know. I was only playing. There, yeah, Mrs. Higgins. That's what comes of letting him play. Ridiculing their, their benefactors. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It seems to me that this child is absolutely incorrigible. Every time I see her, she's making a disturbance of some sort. Well, she is rather a problem, Mr. Wyckoff. Problem? If you ask me, she's the sort of problem that might be better solved at a public institution. Oh, we couldn't send her away. Couldn't? I say you shall send her away. I say she'll have to go to a public institution. She'll have to do nothing of the kind. Now, look here, Mr. If this Morgan. child is sent away, I shan't contribute another cent to this orphanage. Now, Mr. Morgan, you can't... Oh, yes, I can. Mrs. Higgins, I should like to talk to you and to this little girl privately. Perhaps your office would be the best place. Why, uh, uh, of course, Mr. Morgan. Young lady, I've got a great idea. Would you like me to tell it to you? Mm, yes. Think of it. Oh, excuse me. Yes, sir. That's better. Now, look here. Here's the secret. How would you like it if you and I got to be very, very good friends? I don't think I would like it, sir. Why, Elizabeth? I would like to talk to Elizabeth alone. Do you mind? Why, uh, of course not. Thank you.
Tell me, why wouldn't you like to be friends with me? Oh, just because. Just because? Oh, come now, you've got to give me a much better reason than that. Well, it's just because when grown-ups come to visit us, we have to say yes, ma'am, and no, sir, and smile all the time. <laughs> Can you keep a secret? A secret? Mm -hmm. I won't tell anybody. Shake. Ah, uh, here's the secret. You don't have to say any of those things to me. You see, all this business out here is new to me. My regular business is being a lawyer. What's a lawyer? Well, if you ever get into trouble, a lawyer is a person who gets you out of trouble. Oh, my. I could use one almost every day. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, what's your name, sweet? Elizabeth Blair. Elizabeth Blair. Well, I've got a much better name for you than that. If I had my way, I'd call you Curly Top. That's what my daddy used to call me, and my mommy, too. They did? Mm-hmm. I'll bet you're just as wise as wise can be. Well, I can recite. Recite? Recite what? All poems. What kind of poems? Before I was a little girl, I was a little bird. I could not laugh, I could not dance, I could not speak a word. But all about the woods I went, and up into the sky. And isn't it a pity I've forgotten how to fly? I think that's the loveliest poem I ever heard. I know more. Oh, well, go right ahead. I wake in the morning early, and always the very first thing, I poke out my head, and I sit up in bed, and I sing, and I sing, and I sing. <laughs> I know more. Oh, I'll bet you do. <clears throat> but listen. All right. I've got a friend that... Oh, I bet that isn't true. What? You said you had a friend. I bet you have lots of friends. <laughs> <laughs> Curly, you're an old flatterer. Is that something bad? Of course not, darling. Now, look here. I'm pretty sure this friend of mine would like you. I think he would like to give you a beautiful home, lovely dresses to wear, dozens of dolls and playthings, and send you to the grandest kind of school and all sorts of nice things like that. But how could your friend do all that? I thought only daddies and mommies could do such nice things. Well, being a lawyer, that's where that comes in. Of course, you're too young to understand, but I could arrange with this friend of mine to legally adopt you in court. Now, all I want you to tell me is how you would like it if this friend of mine could do all those nice things for you. Would you want him to? I don't think I could do it. You couldn't? Why not? Do I have to say right off? <laughs> You mean you want time to think it over? Could I come back and tell you in just a little while? Why, of course. I'll wait for you right here. Promise? Promise. Cross your heart? Mary! Mrs. Denham, hmm? suppose that youngster had a real chance in life. Suppose someone gave her everything that money can buy. Well, of course, we always hope that our children may be adopted. But Elizabeth's case presents a special problem. You see... Well, there's no human problem that can't be solved by kindness. By Jove, Mrs. Denham, I'll do it. You mean that you will adopt Elizabeth? Only on one condition. She must never know that I'm her guardian. But why not? Because she's always had to give thanks for every mouthful. I'm going to change all that. She's never going to have to be grateful to me. From now on, she's going to have all the lovely things in life, just because she has a right to them. But the child will have to be told something. That's right. Let's see. I've got it. Tell her that I'm acting for a client. We'll say that she's being adopted by a man by the name of... Uh, Let's call him Hiram Jones. <laughs> oh, Mr. Morgan. Well, now, before you go on with this plan, there's something about Elizabeth that you must know. Come in. Well, have you made up your mind? You haven't? Why not? Could I tell your friend? My friend? Oh. <laughs> you mean Mr. Jones, uh, Hiram Jones, hmm? Well, what is it you want to tell him? 
I would like to tell him that I would love to go and live in this house if my sister could come, too. Your sister? Yes, my sister Mary. She works in the kitchen. There she is. This is Mary Blair, Mr. Morgan. Oh, yes, uh, with Matt. Is my sister pretty? And she's awfully nice, too. Mr. Morgan, I'm very grateful to you. I mean, to your friend, for wanting to adopt Curly. But you see, when my father and mother... Darling, could you run outside and play for just a minute? Must I? I think you'd better. All right. You see, Mr. Morgan, at the time my father and mother were killed... Killed? Yes. In an automobile accident. I'm so sorry. At the hospital, just before they... Just before they died, I promised them Curly and I would never be separated. I couldn't break that promise, Mr. Morgan. She needs me, and I need her. I understand. I hope you'll thank your friend for us. Please tell him how grateful we are, but... Goodbye, Mr. Morgan. Thank you, Aunt Genevieve. One of your own compositions? Yes, the very latest. The melody came to me only this evening. That's well, quite the nicest thing you've ever done, Edward. It has real feeling. Your little nephew has real feeling, my darling, just like anyone else. Well, I'm going upstairs to write some letters. I shall come down and kiss you goodnight before I go to bed. Promise? I do. All right, it's a bargain. In the meantime, I shall be thinking up at least six new compliments for you. Real as can be, the roar of a train, the wind and the rain. Then, without any warning, suddenly you came to me. He will that I stand in my wonder.
Edward? Edward. Oh, Aunt Genevieve. Well, I'm waiting. Waiting for what? For my compliments, of course. You promised me an even half dozen. So I did. Well, I shan't be able to keep my promise. I've been very busy. Busy? Word of honor. I've been playing an old and charming game. I've been daydreaming. Hmm. Just suppose, for example, see that painting there? But of course I do. I'll have you know, young man, my eyesight's every bit as good as it ever was. Well, just suppose the figure of that lovely child should suddenly come to life. Suppose it smiled at you and waved its hand. What would you do? I'd call a doctor. Now, Edward, now, now, take it easy. Well, the truth of the matter is, uh, I just love your game. I'd adore it if, if the child in that picture could come into this home and, and actually live with us. Do you really mean that, Aunt Genevieve? Well, there, there's nothing that makes a home so happy as the sound of a child's laughter. By Jove, I'll do it. Do what? We'll open our place at Southampton. In the meantime, I can arrange for all the necessary legal details. You can do all the shopping required, summer dresses and all the gadgets that go with them. Oh, Aunt Genevieve, we're going to have a glorious summer. I'll send the limousine out next week. Send the limousine for what? Why, for that lovely child in the painting, of course. Now, Edward, game or no game, you sound to me a little pitched in the head. Oh, I've gone mad, Aunt Genevieve. Delightfully mad. Well, I think I will send for that doctor. I should if I were you. And before the doctor arrives, allow me to be the first to congratulate you. Congratulate me? For what? My dear, you're about to become a mother. <gasps> Bye, Mrs. Benham. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye, Mrs. Higgins. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mrs. Higgins. All right. Very good, miss. Sentimental? <laughs> well, what are you crying for? Why shouldn't I? Why can't I be happy, too? <laughs> Now we're going to live in high society. We must always remember to be grand lady. Oh, I won't forget. Hello, mister. Elizabeth. Am I to understand that the, um, the livestock are also calling on Mr. Morgan? They are. My word. Uh, Miss Blair and her sister to see you, sir. And Jeremy, they're here. menagerie come from? They were right behind us all the time. Right behind you? Yes, sir, in the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Aunt Genevieve, I want you to meet our new family. Mary, Elizabeth, this is Aunt Genevieve. How do you do? Well, my dears, I'm very glad to see you both. Won't you come in? Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Reynolds, will you see to it that our other guests are comfortably taken care of? You mean the uh, livestock, sir? Right. Link to a pony and a duck. And no nonsense now. I say, do you understand what I'm saying to you? 
How do you like your new home? It's wonderful. Mm. Would you like to look around and see the rest of it? Mm-hmm. But first, I would like to see where Spunky and Betsy are going to sleep. Oh, certainly. Oh, no, Edward. Elizabeth must rest before dinner. Oh, come now, Edward. But Mr. Jones will give me strictest orders. Mr. Jones insists that Elizabeth and Mary have only the best of care. Oh, I see. Well, we can't argue with Mr. Jones. That's what I thought. All right, then. Mr. Jones wins, but I'll see you all at dinner. Hmm? <laughs> Come, dear. Breakfast at eight. Luncheon at one. Dinner at seven. My word. <laughs> Allow me. Now I'm just like a grown up. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Miss. Why, I didn't do anything. Terrace Reynolds. Very good. Could I say something to Mr. Reynolds? Privately? Well, I think it could be arranged. But don't you stay too long. I won't. <laughs> I want to thank you for a very nice dinner, sir. Thank you, Miss. You wish for something else, Miss? What is it, Miss? Couldn't you come down here so I could talk to you? <laughs> oh, my word, Miss. You are a package. Will you be my friend? Whenever I do anything wrong at the table, will you always stop me? I will indeed, Miss. Promise? I do, Miss. I'll always attempt to serve you as if, as if you were a princess. A princess? My, you are nice. Happy? Happy. I didn't know such happiness existed. Promise to let me know if Mr. Jones can do anything more for you? No, oh, he couldn't do anything more. But you could do me a great favor. Done. What? Tell me all about Mr. Jones. Not knowing him or even what he looks like makes him seem such a strange person. He is a strange sort of person, Mary. <laughs> Very strange. 
Perhaps I could best explain him to you if I tell you what he said to me just before you and Curly came here to spend the summer. Oh, do tell me. He told me that all of his life he's had a hunger in his heart. A hunger to love and be loved just for himself. He said he traveled all over the world, Europe, Egypt, the Orient. He searched everywhere for a simple sort of happiness and companionship. He never found it? Not real happiness. Oh, he will find it someday. He must. Maybe you're right, Mary. Happiness may come to Jones, and soon. Just before he sailed for Europe, he uh, said that at last there was uh, hope in his heart. I wish I could thank him for all he's done. Tell him how grateful I am for all the happiness he's brought to Curly and me. Well, just knowing that you and Curly have found happiness here, that'll make him happy. I can promise you that. This is Marla Green, is it? <laughs> no, darling. Come to bed now. Good night. Good night. You say your prayers? Mm-hmm. Mary? Yes, dear? I began it so awfully nice. What is it made of, Mary? Silk. Silk? Oh, my goodness. Good night, dear. Good night. Mary? Uncle Edward said that Mr. Jones was going to send you to a music school. Uh-huh. And he said that he was going to give me a pony chart. And that's a pretty gift. I know, dear. It's all so wonderful I can hardly believe it. But we mustn't talk about it anymore tonight. It's time to go to sleep. Good night. Good night. Mary? Is Mr. Hiram Jones a very rich man? He must be, darling. Do you think maybe he could be the richest man in the world? Mm -hmm. He might be. The richest man in all the world? Oh, my goodness. Southampton Bill, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, two aquaplane boards. Uh, don't you think it's rather dangerous for that youngster to... Dangerous? That child swims like a fish. I really believe she's Neptune's daughter in disguise. <laughs> You enjoyed your lunch, Miss Elizabeth. I always like to eat. A splendid habit, Miss, if I may say so. Did my pony and my duck have a nice lunch? Oh, quite, Miss. Are you going to give me a nice dinner? Without fail, Miss. I wish you wouldn't bow so much. I'm sorry, miss. There you go again. You make my back ache. My word. If 
Isn't that the funniest fist you ever saw? Mm-hmm. Curly, careful of your eyes in the sunlight. Oh, this won't hurt my eyes. This is just the funny papers. Isn't that the one I've read you at least a dozen times since Sunday? Mm-hmm. Will you read it to me again? Yes, if you like. But suppose we wait until later in the afternoon after you've had your nap. All right. I won't forget. Well, Jimmy, the Atlantic Ocean seems rather quiet without you splashing about. Why aren't you swimming today? Oh, I couldn't make it today. I had to work. Work? I hope you don't call flying that airplane of yours work. Mary loves to fly. She's been up lots of times with me. Yes, she's told me all about it. You've been very nice to Mary this summer. That isn't hard to do. No, I gathered you didn't find that hard work. Mrs. Graham, I'd like to talk to you about Mary. Well, there's no law against it. Well, Mary's a wonderful girl, Mrs. Graham. We've had such grand times together this summer. Seems that no matter what happens, we always like the same things. She likes to fly with me. She's a beautiful dancer. And we're both crazy about all kinds of outdoor sports. Even when I'm not with her, I keep thinking about her all the time. And... Well, I'd like to talk about Mary to her guardian, Mr. Jones. But the catch is that he's in Europe now. Just what would you like to say to Mr. Jones? Well, you see, Mary doesn't want to make up her mind about anything. I mean, anything important without Mr. Jones' permission. Well, I thought maybe if I could write him a letter. What about? Well, I... Uh, I, I really can't tell you that, Mrs. Graham. I, I haven't even told Mary about that. Oh, I see. Well, don't you think I ought to write to Mr. Jones Jimmy. and... Hello, Mary. Hello, Jimmy. How are you, Jimmy? Hello, Jimmy. Hello, Mary. Oh, the water was wonderful. And Genevieve, did you sell him a ticket? Mary, I forgot. A ticket for what? Don't tell me you don't even know about it. Why, we're giving a show next week. Who is? What kind of a show? What's this all about? <laughs> oh, it's Curly's show, really. I'm just going to help out. It's kind of a benefit performance. A benefit? For whom? Curly had the most charming idea, Jimmy. She couldn't forget the friends she'd left behind in the orphanage. She wanted to raise some money to buy playthings for them. That's what the show's for. <laughs> Mrs. Denham. Oh, wild horses couldn't have kept me away. Do you know this is the biggest thrill of my life? <laughs> <laughs> have you noticed how this old world is changing more than ever now? Life needs rearranging. It could be heavenly if we'd all I 
outside your door. Why keep reaching for the moon? Another day is here. There is happiness to share. Look outside your door and stop reaching for the moon. There's life again in lovers' lane and a very good sign. We're on the track to welcome back a bit of a lifeline. That hello neighbor smile will be coming back in style. So will wedding ring. a terrible, awful ache, especially when it rains. At first I was a Brady cat, but now I know it's growing pain. Gosh, oh dear, oh can't you see I'll soon be grown up tall. So I've got to think what I will be when I'm no longer small. When I grow up in a year or two or three, I'll be happy as can be, like a birdie in the tree. When I grow up, there's a lot I want to do. I will have real dollies too, like the woman in the shoe. I want to be a teacher so the children can say, Oh, teacher dear, the gang's all here with apples today. When I grow up, I will have a big surprise, for I'll bake the kind of pies that will make you roll your eyes. And if you see that you need some company, you can call me up and I'll come down when I go up. When I am sweet 16, I'm going to a ball. Of all the ladies there, I'd like to be the best of all. I'll wear a dress of silver lace. They'll call me Princess Curly. I'll be like Cinderella, except I won't run home so early. I want to meet a handsome prince with a uniform of gold. But I won't lose my slipper, cause my tootsies might get cold. I'll talk with queens and dance with kings like a little princess would. If I could only do these things, I promise I'll be good. When I'm 21, I wish that I could look like a picture that I saw in a pretty storybook. A lady all dressed up in white with flowers in her hand. And such a veil I never saw, the biggest in the land. Four little girls were standing there, much tinier than me. And they all carried baskets they looked happy as can be. Everyone was smiling and having lots of fun. I wish that I could be like that when I am 21. She looked so nice and comfy, 
in her rocking chair and all, with that little cap upon her head. She looks real pretty, too. I like her long and funny dress. I like her hair, don't you? It must be oh so quiet. You can hear the tick of the clock. But it must be fun to have nothing to do but rock and rock and rock. <laughs> I'd try awfully hard to make you happy. No, Jimmy, you're pretty swell. But I... I just couldn't marry you. Is there someone else? I can't tell you that. Well, I know there is, all right. I watched you at dinner tonight, and I watched you... Well, you're always looking at Mr. Morgan. Well, why shouldn't I? Because I don't like him. He's got a swelled head, and just because he's got all the money in the world, he... Jimmy, I won't let you talk about him that way. I'm sorry. It's all right. I'll always love you, Mary, even... even if you say you can't really care for me. Oh, Jimmy. Edward, do stop that ridiculous prowling about. You act as if you had the heebie-jeebies. Oh, I'm just restless. You've been restless for the last three days, ever since you arrived to see Curly's show. Can't you think of something more interesting to talk about? I'm just a trifle nervous, that's all. Well, I might be able to change the subject if I really put my mind to it. And you make a hit with me if you will. Very well. Let me see, what shall we talk about? Have you seen Mary since dinner? Nope, I haven't. She, uh, she went out somewhere with Jimmy, didn't she? How should I know? Don't you think they make an adorable couple? Do they? He's really very much in love with her. He's a wonderful catch. He comes into money on both sides of his family. Oh, he does, does he? Well, maybe that's the reason he's got a swell head. And that and because he's got brass buttons on a trick uniform. Why, Edward, I didn't know you'd ever notice Jimmy. I am surprised to learn that you've even observed the kind of clothes he wears. Conceited young idler. <laughs> Stop laughing. I will not. Edward Morgan, insanely jealous and acting like a 16-year-old Romeo. Oh, dear, this is the happiest moment of my life. I'm not at all jealous. Do you think I care anything about Mary Blair? Well, the only reason she's here is because it was impossible to take Elizabeth without taking her, too. I tell you, I'm not in the least interested in Mary. She doesn't mean a thing to me. Well, I'm so relieved to hear you say that. Relieved? Why? Well, Edward, I've been noticing things. And I had convinced myself that you'd grown very fond of Mary, in which case there might be complications. Complications? I'll try to make myself clear. I have every reason to believe that Jimmy Rogers means to propose to Mary before the summer is over. How do you know that? I looked at him. Do you think you can tell a thing like that by just looking at my a man? My dear man. Any woman of my age and experience who can't tell just by looking at her. Oh, it. nonsense. What are you thinking about? I'm not thinking. 
I've decided. Decided what? I'm going to get the fastest airplane in the country. You aren't going to learn to fly it yourself, are you? Certainly, why not? <laughs> and that isn't all. I'm going to start learning some of those trick dances, too. <laughs> I'll make you happy, Mary. I know I will. I believe you, Jimmy. Oh, hello, Mr. Morgan. Jimmy, will you pardon me? Mary, I want to talk to you alone. From now on, you'll have to ask me about that, sir. What? Jimmy. Shh, I want to tell him. I'm the luckiest man in the world, Mr. Morgan. Lucky? What do you mean? Mary and I have just become engaged, sir. Engaged? That's right, sir. You know the way I feel about it. Well, I... I just want to go out and tell the whole world. I understand, Jimmy. You should be very proud. Mary's a fine girl. I want to be the first to congratulate you. Thank you, sir. Mary, my congratulations to you. I'm sure that you and Jimmy together will find real happiness. I'll do everything to make that come true, sir. I'm sure of it. And if there's ever anything I can do to add to your happiness, anything, understand? I want you both to promise to let me know. Say, Mr. Morgan, you're pretty swell. Oh, I mean it, Jimmy, every word of it. Thank you, sir. Well, good night. Good night, and my best to both of you, always. My goodness. <laughs> Sleepyhead, if you aren't really awake, I can dip on your stomach again. Never mind. You can't go back to sleep again. Now, look here, young lady. This is Sunday morning, and oh, I... Oh, no, Uncle Edward. No, sir. All right, you win. <laughs> Leave me the funny paper. Uh, wait a minute. How about breakfast in Sunday school? Oh, I like Sunday school. Do you take me? Yes, sir. Give me a ride? Mm hmm. I'll go and get your bathroom and slippers. All right. you to tell me everything you've been doing while I've been away. You know, I've been in the city for a whole week. What have you been up to all that time? Every day I was wishing that you were here. Curly, you flatterer. Did you have any special reason why you wanted to see me? Oh, very special. I especially wanted to talk to you about something. Oh, right here I am. What is it? Well, I wanted to talk to you about getting married. What? Oh, Curly, whatever put that notion into your funny little head? <laughs> Please don't laugh, Uncle Edward. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot that this was very special. Now, just what is it you want to know about getting married? Well, what does getting married mean? You mean like Jim and Mary? Well, that means when they get married, they'll have their own home and always live together. Mary said that I was going to live in Jimmy's house. Does that mean that Jimmy's getting married to me, too? I'll tell you all about that some other time. Uncle Edward, I don't want to get married to Jimmy. Why not? 
Because I want Mary and me to get married to you. Curly, you're a designing woman. You know that, don't you? Now get up and get out of here. I've got to get dressed. You hear me? Come on. Now, breakfast, funnies, Sunday school, and lunch. And then I've got a real surprise for you. It's the present? Well, it wouldn't be a surprise anymore if I told you. Mary! Mary! When I grow up in a year or two or three, I'd be happy as can be, like a birdie in a tree. When I grow up, there's a lot I want to know. I'll have Bill Dollies too, like a woman in the shoe. I want to be a teacher so the children can say, Teacher, dear, can go hell with April today. When I grow up, there will be a big surprise. Cause I'll make that kind of pies that will make you roll your eyes. And if you see that you need some company, you can call me up and I'll come down with my My word. When I grow up. <laughs> Edward, how dare you spy on me? <laughs> what's the matter, darling? Growing pain? Why shouldn't I grow up? Please, Uncle Edward, what's my surprise? I have two surprises for you, young lady. Two? Mm -hmm. Come on, darling. Ready for the first one? I can hardly wait. Well, you won't have to wait. Not another minute. Now, you sit right here and listen very, very carefully. All right. Whenever clouds start gathering to cover up the sun, it really doesn't mean a thing to me. It seems a tiny miracle comes to me on the run and never fails to bring a remedy. She's just a little curly-headed thing who creeps into my heart and makes it sing. Curly top, you little bundle of joy. Curly top, you're like a wonderful toy. You're just so full of sunshine, folks agree. You could supply the world with vitamin D. Two eyes that make the heavens proud to be blue. Angel cake, it's just a copy of you. Take everything that's sweet or all into one. That can't top you, curly top. Curly top, you little bundle of joy. Curly top, you're like a wonderful toy. You're just so full of sunshine, folks agree. You could supply the world with vitamin D. Two eyes that make the heavens proud to be blue. Angel cake, it's just a copy of you. Take everything that's sweet or all into one. I can't top you, turn it up. Yes, one for you and one for Mary. Will you run and tell Mary to come in? Edward, you might as well admit that you're in love with Mary. Why don't you tell us so? Haven't you heard the news, Aunt Genevieve? It so happens that Mary's engaged to Jimmy Rogers. Have you ever told her that you love her? Here she is, Uncle Edward. Shall I have my surprise first? Yes, indeed you may. Oh, goody. Here you are, young lady. A string of pearls. Pearls? Mm-hmm. 
They look just like those little stones on the beach. Oh, Elizabeth. Do you like them? I would really rather have a pair of roller skates. Well, we'll throw them in for good measure. Mary, I'm sailing for Europe next week. Before I go, I want to give you an engagement present and wish you and Jimmy all the happiness in the world. Oh, I can't take it. Why not? I wasn't really in love with Jimmy. We're not engaged anymore. I told him last night. You aren't going to marry him? No. Mary, you better watch out. Watch out? You might not get married at all. I asked Uncle Edward to marry us this morning, and he said he wouldn't. Oh, Elizabeth, you didn't. Oh, yes, I did. Didn't I ask you to marry us, Uncle Edward? Oh, Elizabeth. Mary, wait, I, I want to talk with you. What's the matter? He seemed kind of excited. <laughs> we'll go abroad and stay a whole year. Oh, it sounds like heaven. We'll make it heaven, darling. Look, can't we share our happiness? Share? What do you mean? I mean with that grand person who made everything possible. You mean uh, Mr. Jones? Yes. Oh, Mary, you blind little sweetheart. There never was any Mr. Jones. You mean that you're Mr... Mm-hmm. Oh! Mary, do you mind if Uncle Edward could come now and leave me the funnies? Oh, my word.